Hey everyone, Coach Investor back to another video for today. So in today's video, let's talk about the Fed's decision to raise interest rates by another 25 basis points. And I'll try and make the case as to why it actually makes sense and why most of the, let's say, so-called experts were wrong. Of course, we were all anticipating maybe a pause, but definitely not a cut if we're being honest. I said in my last video, I think it makes sense to raise another 25 basis points, but it also makes a little bit of sense to pause right now. They went for the 25 basis points directly and maybe, maybe we're going to see a pause later on this year or maybe in the next one. Because if you look at dot plot, we can see that there is one extra raise for this year. Could never happen, could happen next, could happen towards the end of the year. We don't know. But right now we're in an environment where, let's be honest, right? We went from zero to four extremely fast. So does this 25 basis points actually really matter? In my opinion, I don't think it matters much anymore. I'll touch back on this point later on in this video. Now, most people obviously anticipated maybe a pause because of what has been happening with regards to the banking sector. And to that, we have actually a quote from Jerome Powell. So he said, at a basic level, Silicon Valley bank management failed badly. They grew the bank very quickly. They exposed the bank to significant liquidity risk and interest rate risk. Powell added that the bank experienced an unprecedentedly rapid and massive bank run due to its very large group of connected depositors. Specific failures, specific customer dynamics. So again, we hear this, let's say, comment on Silicon Valley Bank. This is an isolated event. Should not spill over to the overall banking system. Of course, we've had Credit Suisse, We've had Silvergate Capital, we got First Republic as well. So it's not just SVB, but yes, I don't think it's going to spill over to the overall banking system in the United States or worldwide. Now, why did everybody scream fire? Because yes, there was a fire. Of course, bank runs, when they happen, they happen very, very fast and it goes from here to zero extremely quickly as well. There's no bank in the world that can handle a massive bank run. There's no, if, if suddenly one day everybody has the same thought and like, hmm, I want to go to the bank, take out all my money. There's no bank that can handle this. Unfortunately, Silicon Valley Bank was a bank that was mismanaged from top to bottom. Of course, during very, very low interest rates environment, this bank was operating pretty well. Lots of startups, lots of high tech companies benefited from that as well. Lots of VCs as well. So of course, those types of people, those types of, let's call them experts, quote unquote, screamed fire pretty early on, are screaming stop with the interest rate rates, etc. because, well, they will be making more money when interest rates are lower. But as we've seen before, CPI report still a bit hot-ish. PPI was much better than expected. But again, let's be honest. We went from zero to 4% in a record time. So going another 25, maybe even 50 basis points for all of 2023, is that going to change much? Probably not, probably not, because the effects of this 4%, right, 4.5% are still a bit lagging, let's say. CPI reports, housing, those are still lagging metrics that need to be measured over the next coming ones and quarters. The market, what is it doing? It's not looking what happened in the past. It's always forward looking. And that's probably also one of the reasons why the markets actually finished green-ish. Right now, when I'm filming these videos, futures are green as well, because they anticipate that this might be the last one or one before the last one, which means that after that, either we enter a period of, well, interest rates stay at around 5%, and that's about it and then maybe in 2024 we start to cut, or we might already see a cut later on this year. Remains to be seen, obviously. Now, I'm gonna talk a bit more about saying the good and the bad of this scenario. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and if you want to support me even further, do check out the links down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now, or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. So, of course, now we're at a level we haven't seen or we haven't been since 2007. Of course, we know what happened next, but again, I don't think we are in the same environment as 2008. Nowhere near, if you're asking my opinion. Now, 
On the flip side, me 2008-2007, I was not in the investing scene at all. I was still in high school and I think most of my viewers probably weren't investing yet as well. Some are, but most probably were not. So to us right now, this is a new type of environment. I've been investing for the last seven years or so. So I've seen a lot already, but of course with low interest rates environments. Now that interest rates are higher, of course, my companies that enjoy low interest rates environments, such as Fiverr, Lemonade, SoFi, etc., basically high tech companies that actually are still burning cash, those will probably suffer and won't go up as much as the other companies. Though that have a lot of free cash flow that are generating billions in free cash flow, the likes of Google, Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, etc., the big companies, Adobe, Salesforce, the list goes on and on, those will still fare pretty well in this environment. They might not go up 50% as you might expect in a low interest environment, but they might still go up quite nicely. Now, the big difference today, and to me, this is something that not a lot of people are probably talking about, the big difference today, and this is also the words from NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wan, he says that we need today, and we already have a lot of accelerated computing, but we need more. Because in this current environment, you want to do more with less. You don't want to do less with more. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do less. You want to do more with less. That's why you've seen a lot of cost cuts, lots of job cuts as well throughout the sector. Because these companies still want to grow, right? It's in this type of environment that huge companies can take even more market share. Because at the end of the day, they look, they're like, hmm, maybe we have too many employees. Maybe we're not really focused on what we should be focused on. So let's cut this, let's cut that, and let's follow and do our mission. And then obviously they will reach their goals faster than smaller companies. And so again, in the current environment, right now in the age of, yes, AI, accelerated computing, etc., I don't think you can compare it to back in 2007 when, yes, you would have had a bad, bad recession today if we did not have the computing power, if we did not have AI at the level we are at today. Because yes, today you can do way more with less. And so you don't have that huge hit that you would have had years and years ago where interest rates were extremely high. That's just my opinion, that's how I view things. I think technology is helping the economy in a very, very good way right now that not a lot of people are probably looking into or actually acknowledging it right now. Now, going back to the interest rates, pause, 25 basis points. Of course, they did the hike, which to me makes sense because doing so basically signals to the market that we're not afraid that the overall banking system will explode. If they would have paused or in an extreme case would have cut, that would have signaled to the market that, well, we're in panic mode. We think that if we don't cut or pause, the more banks will suddenly go under. And I think that scenario is way worse then hiking another 25 basis points, which again, to me, will have a very, very little effect, close to none actually, to the overall interest rate aspect or hit that it does to the industry, to the whole economy. If you're asking me, right, I would have much rather have this scenario than the other scenario. Of course, with a rate hike, you can cut it later on. There's no problem, you can always cut it, but at least you're tackling, you're still tackling the issue of high inflation. They're very, very focused on that right now. Of course, a lot of people will say, oh, the market doesn't believe Powell, but he has been saying there's still a lot of work to be done. We still have to tackle inflation. So of course he was going to do a 25 basis points rate hike. Okay, agreed. But remember, he also said that inflation was transitory and that's why we're in this type of mess right now. So you have to look at both sides. But overall, I think 25 basis points was the right move to do. The other side, no hike, maybe even a cut, would have signaled a lot of panic, just as in my opinion. And then again, in the current environment, in the current technological environment, AI environment as well, I think we can do a lot more in a high interest rate environment than we could have done 15 years ago. And we will benefit from this in years and years to come. If we have to raise interest rates again, I think the, the shock will be much lower than expected. Of course, if you're mismanaging your bank or your business, yes, you'll go under, but that's just your fault, not the economies, not the Fed, 
monetary policies, etc. So overall, that's about it for this video. Of course, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.